Hey everybody, Captain Orlando Muniz here with Nomad Fishing Charters and today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be installing a brand new rub rail on my 1997 whitewater boat. Stay tuned. Before we get started, let's look at the old rub rail. As you can see there was damage around the bow. Also further down there were some screws that had come loose over the years. This was the original rub rail from back in 1997. Some areas it was just missing chunks. Apparently the boat had been in uh, storms over the years uh, while par parked at the dock and had severe damage. So it was really time to upgrade to the new rub rail and we decided to go with the Taco Superflex. Before we can start the installation, we're going to need some tools starting with a drill, drill bits, some self-tapping screws, silicone, and some tooling. And here's our first look at the Superflex rub rail. We're going to begin by uncoiling it. As you can see, here's a rub rail. It's pretty flexible, even though the weather is pretty cool this morning. Here's, a, here's the uh, shot of the insert we're going to be using. That's going to slide inside to cover all the screw holes. With the help of Captain Danny Avila of Hammer Time Sport Fishing, we will take the new rub rail and divide it and also lay it out in the sun so it can catch some rays and warm up and soften up and facilitate in the installation. As you can see here, Captain Danny is taking the rub rail and is stretching it and uncoiling it and we're going to lay it out. We're going to find the center, mark the center, then we're going to lay it out in the sun and then we're going to begin installation. All right, now we're ready to start removing the old rub rail. We're going to start by removing a set screw that is holding the insert in place and a couple of screws that hold the finish cap on the transom. Once we get those off, we can start prying the old insert, which is nothing more than just a 5 8 inch uh, nylon rope insert. We're going to pull that out. Now that we have removed the insert, all of the self-tapping screws that held the original rub rail are exposed and ready to be removed. This is where a heavy duty cordless drill really helps out. Don't forget, the most important tool you can have is a friend with an extra set of hands. This really makes the process go a lot smoother. One of the problems you'll encounter while doing this job is that some of the screws or heads may be damaged. These are pan head screws. So if that happens, just, you can just rip off the old rub rail and come back later with a pair of vice rips and you can get to those screws and remove them. Now that the rub rail is off, we're going to address some of those stubborn screws. We're going to take a pair of vice rips and we're going to grab them. They're actually sticking out about a quarter inch. They're real easy to get to. Just grab them with the vice grip and turn them around a few times. They come right out. And here's a good tip. Since you've already got the rub rail off and all the screws are exposed, it's a good time to tighten the screws that hold the cap to the hull of the boat. These screws over the years with the vibration can come a little bit loose but now is a good time to tighten them before you install the new rub rail. Next we're going to take a rag and some acetone and clean the entire surface so that we have a nice clean surface to work on. rub rail has been sitting out in the sun for an hour or so it is warmed up and it's much more flexible and easier to work with for the next step captain Danny and I will go ahead and stretch out the rub rail 
lay it out and also find the center where we're going to be working from the bow towards the stern. It's really important at this step in the process to try to not let the rub rail rub on the concrete deck. This can scratch the rub rail. At this point, Captain Danny is going to use a clamp to mark the center of the rub rail. At this point, we're going to take the rest of the rub rail and lay it out over the boat. This is going to do two things. It's going to keep the rub rail from getting scratched or damaged, and it's also going to help us stretch it out a little later, and I'll show you how. Before we begin fastening the new rub rail, we're going to take some clear silicone and fill in all the old holes. We're not going to reuse these holes. We're going to drill new holes and use new fasteners. The process of fastening the rub rail begins at the bow. We're going to attach a couple of screws just to get it started. Remember, the straighter it is when you start, the straighter you'll finish. So we're only going to attach a couple of screws, and then we're going to stretch it out towards the back of the boat. We'll show you how. Since we're going to be opening up new holes, we're going to be using a 5 30 seconds drill bit. Uh, we tried a couple different sizes, and this one seemed to work the best with the number 10 one and a quarter inch stainless steel pan head screws. Um, it's important that you line up the rub rail so that these holes do not fall over the old holes. You want to get it right in between so you're drilling new holes and into new fresh material. Now that we have the first two screws on both sides, we're ready for our next step. Now we're going to stretch the rub rail over the boat as far as possible and utilizing one of the existing holes, we're going to attach it to the transom and you'll see why. Now that we found our sweet spot, I'm going to hold it in place while Captain Danny drives the screw in. As you can see here, the rub rail is still far from its final resting place. Now the idea is to take the rub rail and stretch it almost like you would a slingshot. And get it nice and tight and this should give us pretty clean straight lines. Now Captain Danny will start to drill the new holes and I will follow and install the new uh, pan head screws. Okay, so now we've made our way to the end of the boat, to the back of the boat, the transom, and we're going to negotiate this 90 degree turn here. This is where that super flex rub rail really comes in handy. The extra flexibility is going to make this a lot easier. So what we've gone ahead and done is we removed the temporary screw that was holding the rub rail in place. And now we're going to stretch it out and cut it to size and then finish it off with a cap that comes with the kit. Before we wrap up this side of the boat, we're going to add an extra two screws here in the corner. This is going to help ensure that the corner never loses its shape and that the rub rail is very secure in that critical part. So 
So now that we've reached the end of the port side installation, we're going to figure out where we need to make our cut. And using a piece of painter's tape or masking tape, we're going to mark the exact spot where we need to cut. So after measuring twice, we're going to cut once using this PVC cutting tool. If you don't have a, a power tool like this, you can use any hand tool, anything that'll be that'll work on wood for woodworking will work on this. The most important thing is to make sure that the tool is sharp and it'll make a nice clean cut. Now we're ready to install the end cap. We're going to start by figuring out exactly where it needs to go. And because this cap is a little different from the other one, we have to we're gonna have to drill some new holes and reposition that cap. Before we secure the end cap, we have to go ahead and install the insert for this rub rail. Uh, Captain Danny starts by working it into the, the, the actual rub rail and working it and also uh, helping it along with a rubber mallet. Now that the insert is partially in, we're going to just check it for fit, make sure it's in the right spot. And then we're going to use a, a small self-tapping screw to secure it permanently and keep it from uh, shifting in the future. And here in Florida, we have a lot of temperature uh, changes and humidity changes, and we don't want that insert to shift. So we're going to use a small screw that's going to be covered later by the cap which is going to keep it in place. Here Captain Danny is going to open a small pilot hole that we're going to use for the set screw. Um, he's going to go ahead and drill the pilot hole and allow that screw to go in. As you can see it's placed very close to the end just enough to keep that insert from sliding back and forth. There you have it. And there's the cap. As you can see, the screw is barely visible. Okay, here's another tip. Every time you make progress of anywhere between three and four feet of the insert, it's you're going to start seeing some creases or ripples in that insert. It's important to take it and just give it a good pull. Here, Captain Danny's giving it a good pull. You can see how all of a sudden it straightens out. Everything looks nice and smooth. This is how you want it to look. On this particular day, the weather was quite cold for South Florida standards, so we used a heat gun to make the rubber a little more malleable and to help allow the insert to fall into place. Here's another quick tip. Make sure that your insert or rub rail is always sitting on either a piece of cardboard or a tarp like we used in this case because dragging it on the concrete will put scratches in it and you will not be able to get rid of those scratches later. So this way we can just pick it up and drag it along without it dragging on the concrete. Well, as you can see, we're nearing the end of this project and the boat is looking much, much better. It looks like a totally different boat. Now we just have to wrap things up on the starboard side transom. And we're going to go ahead and install the set screw like we did on the port side. Put in our end cap. And then we just have to clean things up and we're ready to roll. It looks like that's a wrap. The rub rail looks great. The boat looks like new and I'm ready to enjoy it for many more years. Many thanks to my good friend Captain Danny Avila of Hammer Time Sport Fishing and the good folks over at Taco Marine. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and also leave your questions and comments in that section. Until next time, my name is Captain Orlando Muniz with Nomad Fishing Charters.